from Yankee Rock Farm here in the Champlain Valley of Vermont. My partner and I raise registered border lesters, border cheviots, and fin sheep. We raise our animals as registered breeding stock and also for their meat and fiber. But what I'm here to talk about I'm here to talk about today specifically is the fin sheep, like this girl over here. I normally represent the Fin Sheep Breeders Association at the New York Sheep and Wool Festival in Rhinebeck. As most of you are probably aware, that has been canceled this year. Um, so unfortunately, we couldn't come with our sheep, but I'm still able to reach um, at least some portion of our audience here on these virtual formats. So, a little bit about myself. Um, I've been raising fin sheep since 2012. As a young 4-H'er with not a lot of land and nearly no infrastructure. I was originally drawn to the fins for one main purpose, and that's their prolificacy. Fins are known to have litters of lambs, anywhere from triplets on up to quadruplets, quintuplets, and even sextuplets. So, with my really limited land and space, I thought I could manage just a couple of ewes, but still get a pretty good sized lamb crop every year. Uh, and that worked out for a while, and I just fell in love with the breed for so many reasons, including their size, their temperament, and their versatility, that I have since stuck with it. Um, I was also really interested in fins because of their historical purpose here in the United States. So, of course, fin sheep are native to Finland, where they're known as the Finnish landrace breed. However, they were first imported to North America in the late 1960s, um, first into Canada, and then shortly after, um, some amount of those sheep were then imported to the United States by a handful of private breeders. Because this gene pool was so small and limited, um, the fins in this country are actually not pure. Um, at that time, they had to allow for some crossbreeding in of other breeds, such as the Dorset, to diversify the genetic base that was here. Um, the flock book has been closed, which means there hasn't been any allowance for that type of crossbreeding since the 90s. But originally when they were brought here, it was necessary to help the breed thrive in the United States. Which brings me to the reason for why they were imported here. Jumping back to that prolificacy, fin sheep were brought kind of to help save uh, part of the commercial sheep industry. So as of 2011, these numbers really haven't changed much across many, many years in the United States. The average lambing percentage in the United States was 150%. This means that a single ewe would average about one and a half lambs born per year. Fin sheep really excel here, where a good ewe who's up to breed standard should be able to produce a 300% lambing percentage, meaning she should have at least three lambs to herself every year. So when fins were originally brought to the United States, they were used to cross into a lot of these maternal breeds, such as the Dorset um, and other white-faced sheep, it, to help raise that lambing percentage. That maternal cross, say a half Dorset, half fin, could then be bred to a Suffolk or another type of terminal sire to create pretty meaty lambs that grow well, but are also coming from good maternal ewes who can have two or three, feed all of them, and raise them to a good market size. Um, not only were they used to cross into these commercial flocks on an individual basis, but they actually helped um, influence a composite breed still really, really popular in the United States today known as the polypay. The polypay is a four-way cross, between a Rambouillet, a Tarhi, a Dorset, and a Fin Sheep. And they were designed really to be the ideal maternal breed for the United States sheep industry. Uh, the Fin Sheep Breeders Association 
in their promotion of the Finns here in the United States has pretty much stayed true to that prolific focus of the breed. Um, 60 to 70 percent of the fin sheep breed standard is based on reproductive characteristics. And that's pretty important to us as fin breeders as well as being a tool to the rest of the sheep industry um, for all the reasons that I've mentioned. So starting with the rams, around four or five up to eight months of age, they should be sexually matured. That means you're starting to see those secondary sex characteristics. They look rammy about their heads um, and they're acting aggressive towards uh, breeding behaviors. The ewes, on the other hand, should also mature um, earlier sexually than other breeds. So they should be matured enough to lamb by the time that they're a year old. Not all fin breeders actually breed them this young, but your ewes should be able to do so. We also want to see top-notch maternal behaviors in our fin ewes. Um, so that includes lambing ease. We don't like to see fins that have many issues delivering their lambs. They should be able to do it well naturally. We want to see the maternal behavior once the lambs are on the ground. So I really like my ewes to go straight to licking those lambs. They um, kind of nicker at them, get them up, get them cleaned off. And as those lambs are growing, I want those ewes to remain pretty attentive to them. And lastly, because these fins can have so many lambs, they should be very, very milky. And for this reason, there's actually been um, some more fin influence in a handful of dairy flocks around the country. Um, but the fins, if they have three or four or five lambs, really should be able to feed all of them. They're a medium-sized breed, which is really nice for me as a shepherd who's often doing um, management tasks by myself. They have a pretty decent temperament, which makes them easier to work with. They also have short tails, which means no docking. The Fin Sheep Breeders Association actually doesn't allow um, for tail docking, and that doesn't pose any management issues because they're naturally short. Fins are also naturally pulled, which means no horns, which is also a huge benefit. Um, it's just another thing that we don't have to deal with um, with our lambs or our ewes or our rams. There's a pretty wide variety of fleece types amongst the fins because they've been selected so heavily for that prolificacy and those maternal traits. Selection for fleece hasn't been very uniform across the breed. However, most fins, um, as far as micron count goes, range from a medium to a long wool type fleece. They should not be dual coated, but they do come in a variety of colors. The white is... Um, dominant genetically and was more of the original um, base of fins imported. Since that time, uh, there's been a lot more color that has popped up and a lot more popularity for those colors. However, the white fin tends to stay truer to those characteristics. Here at Yankee Rock Farm, I've really tried to stay true to those productive qualities of the fin sheep. Um, one example here is uh, these three yearlings behind me, not, not this girl, that's a border lester who just snuck in here, but um, the three yearlings here um, are bred to have lambs actually in just a couple of weeks. So another piece of that prolificacy is not just that fins can have multiple lambs, but they can breed out of season. There's not a lot of breeds in the United States that can do that today. So personally, in my flock, selection really begins with those maternal traits. Like I've mentioned, I want my ewes to be really attentive to their lambs. When they lamb, the ewes go off into a jug with their lambs alone. That's just to keep a better eye on them and let them bond. However, I really like to see that don't need to go in the jug. Um, so that ewe is right up attentive to her lambs, licking them off, keeping track of them. If they have triplets, which is what I tar is my target for my ewes, they need to be able to feed all of them. Um, so my ewes, my fin ewes, compared to my others, get um, pretty large udders on them. And you can tell they're milking pretty hard during that lactation.
Lastly, I like to see no singles in my fins. Um, so a single born lamb can be fine in the right scenario. Um, and it's not necessarily an immediately negative trait in the fins. But here with our flock, I just don't want to see that. In order to maintain that prolificacy on a pretty standard basis, uh, we have twins occasionally, especially from young moms, but no singles. Next, I really like to select for hardiness. These ewes are great mothers. They'll put everything into their lambs. But, but in order to maintain their own health and condition, I really want them to be able to stand up to the conditions we're putting them in. So I like my fins to be pretty parasite tolerant. They're rotationally grazed throughout the year, so that helps with parasite management. And I like to select for fins that aren't quite so frail. They're sometimes carrying up to three and four lambs, um, even up to twice a year if you we're on an accelerated lambing schedule. So in order to carry those lambs um, and hold up all of that added weight and that whole pregnancy, I want to see fins that have a lot of capacity, some bone to them, some real strength to be able to maintain and sustain those um, lamb crops. Lastly, um, I really like to look for confirmation in my fins, both skeletally and muscularly. muscularly. Um, as far as that goes, I want a correct build with some strength, like I just mentioned about hardiness. These ewes are super bombs, um, so they need the power and the ability to carry all those lambs. And then, um, like I said, we are selling um, some meat off of our farm, and so I need these ewes to produce lambs who can compete with my other breeds as far as growth and overall muscle when we um, send those lambs to the processor. The newest focus of our flock, really, the one we're truly hunkering down on these days, is selecting ewes who are so milky, they're not just feeding those lambs enough to live and grow adequately, but I want them to grow exceptionally. Um, so just this year, we actually butchered some thin lambs along with bordelesters, and that was super exciting for me to have fins that are catching up to bordelester lambs, which grow exceptionally well as meat lambs. And then lastly, less of a focus in our flock, but also important for an all-around well-made sheep, is fleece. Like I said, there's a huge variance in the type of fleece seen in fins. I personally am trying to breed for a, a denser type fleece, a little heavier shearing fleece. My fins are all shorn twice a year, um, so I want to have enough weight and enough staple length that I can kind of justify that twice a year shearing and still have a quality clip um, that can be sold to a hand spinner or processed at the mill. And That's all I have for you today. Um, if you want to hear more about fins or our farm, feel free to visit our website at www.yankeerockfarm.com. You can also find us on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and Twitter, all with the Yankee Rock Farm handle. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope you enjoyed this and learned a little bit about um, the fins.